Uh, Michael, after last weekend, what's your mindset and I guess message as well going into the remaining fixtures this season? Well, well look, we want to we want to bounce back because we was on a fantastic run. Uh, we've had a couple of sore results, and we have a, a team coming to our box at the weekend who are in form. There's a rivalry between the two teams, so. Uh, the players need to perform and perform well. We want to bounce back with a strong performance and a home win. To what extent are you considering maybe looking to the future a bit more and, and maybe trying out a few things in the games that are about to come? Yeah, definitely we'll, we'll try a few things out for sure. I thought last week the performance was good, so um, there was things to move on and build from from that performance. It was a good performance, I think. Uh, yeah, there'll be an opportunity for one or two if they earn it via training, but there's one or two also that have been patient and probably deserve a go as well. In terms of specifics, you certainly alluded to the fact that maybe Ryan Kent and Alfredo Morelos may be more likely to, to leave the club in the summer. Do, do they still have a part to play from now until the end of the season, and how big a part? Yeah, of course they do. They've been two fantastic players for the club, you know, and both represented the club very well, been important players for a number of years. In terms of the their situation, there's nothing to speak about really big outside other than we've had the conversations inside, we're mutually in the same place of what should happen. We haven't come forward with a contract offer for either and both of those have been free to speak to other clubs for a while now. So, But in terms of the next five games, they're Rangers players and uh, and they'll continue to be to be so until, uh, and, until anything's announced officially. Again, there are so many players that maybe question marks. Malik Tillman, for instance, of course he was injured then. Is he going to be fit to, to see him from now until the end of the season? No, unfortunately that's the end of Malik's season. Um, he's got a hamstring injury, he's gone back to Bayern just to for them to have a look as well. He's obviously had his scan and everything. It's a hugely sad end into the season for him because he's obviously a fine young player and he's He's performed well for the club so far this season. How would you rate the chances then that that's not the last time Rangers fans will see him in a, a Rangers jersey? That's all still ongoing in the background as well. Any other injury te team news, uh, Michael, from the weekend? Yeah, Borna are missed this weekend. Uh, there's one or two that have, didn't train early in the week. Scott Arfield didn't train un until today. Uh, had a slight problem after the game. Uh, and we'll monitor Ryan, Ryan Kent. He, he came off for, for tactical reasons at the weekend, but um, yeah, we'll monitor him because he's had one or two ongoing issues. You're talking about um, giving other players a chance. <coughs> You'll match slightly to start then this weekend. A big opportunity for him and other players, you know, looking ahead again to next season. Yeah, listen, it's a big opportunity for everyone. What I would say is they've had, they've had big opportunities since November. Um, and the best team plays. When you sit down before every game, you, you, you pick the strongest team. So there is big opportunities, but since I've come in November, everyone's had the same opportunity. They've had to earn it and the right to play. Some have not always been fit, um, and, and, and obviously one or two now are fit and are looking for opportunities, namely Ridvan and, and Rabi Matondo, obviously new signings at the start of last season that haven't really uh, built, up, built up any momentum or been able to show uh, what maybe they wanted to show. Um, so yeah, there's an opportunity in the next five games, but we were picking the strongest team to play the games. There's no gimmies. How do you get your <coughs> players up for these five games when compared to what is usually on offer at Rangers trophies, big matches, th there's not as much on offer here. How do you get the players up for the game as a manager? Well, the end of the last two seasons, you're right, have been, you know, there's been a lot of drama and the end of one season you, you win the league, the end of the next season you're playing a European final, you're fighting at the top end of the league and you've got a Scottish Cup, so I get it, but OK, you, that, that's, that's the result of the, the season that we've had so far. You play at Ibrox, we have 47,000 season ticket holders and they're demanding a performance against Aberdeen. Every time you put on the shirt, it's a huge privilege. and. I'll be looking for things towards the group. We've been moving towards next year in ideas uh, since I came in. It's about finishing this season strongly and also building for the future. That, that continues. There's five games against teams around us. If we're not at it, they're very dangerous games. What's the situation with uh, Robbie <coughs> McCrory? Is he going to be fit to play some games? You've mentioned in the past that you were looking to give him a chance. Yeah, he's fit and available for the weekend, so there's a decision to be made there. The seven or eight players or whoever's out of contract at the end of the season, Michael, have you offered any of them a new contract? Yeah, listen, there's talks going on. We'll announce them as their as they're definites. There's one or two we, we've offered contracts to. Yeah. You've, a lot was mentioned of, of your comments after the game about the extent of the rebuild. When you look back to when you took over, is it fair to say there's maybe an underestimate of the rebuild required or 
do you look back now, do you see the rebuild still as big now as it was then? Well, I think the goalposts move because I've played 24 games and I've lived with the group a little bit more. But I still think if you were at the game last weekend, that that's obviously Celtic are going to end this season fantastically well with the trophies. But if you're in the stadium last weekend, I thought my team performed well. So it's up to you where you, de- where you determine it. Everyone's got an opinion. I've got a clear plan and it's just about executing that now. We've seen a lot of senior figures depart directors as well. What does that say about the direction of the club moving forward next season? Listen, there's been some big decisions made, isn't there, in terms of the infrastructure on the executive board, and I think some of them are are people's own decisions, and other ones are obviously decisions made strategically to make the the club stable and fresh with new ideas moving forward, and uh, I've been fully kept up to speed with everything that's going on, and I'm I'm at calm and easy. I see a board that's really aligned and aligned with where we want to go, so I'm I'm calm. On a similar theme, Michael, it seems like a what's the word, like a reset or a refresh for, for the club. Culture change can take time, but you, you'll be tasked with bringing results pretty much immediately. How do you kind of square that circle? Hugely excited by it. One exciting time. You know, like we, you know, if the fans want one or two new faces coming in, they're coming in. It's a huge exciting time. We have won a lot of football games. We come back, we finish this season strongly, we go and have a strong pre-season and we come out of it and we go again. Yeah. It's an opportunity for us there right at the start of the season to try and qualify for the Champions League, uh, which is an unbelievable opportunity for the club. So there's a lot to look forward to. You know, I'm away. Uh, the recruitment side of things is, as I say, a long way down the road. I'm excited by it. I'm energised by it. And I think that the, the, you, you will certainly see a new Rangers. But at the moment, I still think the team have performed to a decent level. And, and uh, it's been a disappointing season. But... You know, the, the, the quickest way is to, to recruit well, come back fresh, strong and go again. And I'm excited. I'm excited about the change of the club. I'm excited about the opportunity it gives us to, to recruit. Would there be a need for some patience though? You talk about a new Rangers there both on field and also off it. Is there a need for a little bit maybe more patience? I live and work in Glasgow. <laughs> Michael, I wonder if you'd uh, caught the Youth Cup final the other night, what you made of it, and also um, what you're looking for from these young players. It's obviously an opportunity for them, this amount of change that's going on as well. What are you looking for when you you see a youth player coming through the academy and what will they need to, to be part of your team going forward? Well, firstly, I was uh, I was away at another game that was pre-arranged with some meetings as well, so I wasn't at the game, but my staff was. I've watched the game back. Um, exciting game. Exciting game, a bit of a hockey match, obviously, and a lot of goals and a lot of excitement. It looked like a, a young boys game with a lot of talented young boys who were, you know, playing in the national stadium with all that excitement and uh, and energy that they have. It's a big step to the game that was played a few days before in the same stadium with the first team. I think it's fair to say a big step physically, a big step technically a big step in terms of the expectations and the pressure that he would put on them. But I thought there was good players in both teams. And in terms of me, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a young player that comes over to the first team and and, and doesn't show any respect in terms of trying to take a first team player's shirt. I'm looking for a hungry, angry young man, if you like, who wants to go and take on the world. With the exposure for young players here to train to the first team is ready for. It's every time we play, the next day we train and If that's whoever's on our bench, seven or eight come over and match that and train together. So I would say 90% of the B team have had a chance to train with us. The 18s have actually trained with us a couple of times when the B team have not been there. So I know all the young players. At the moment, is anyone ready to step in and and be a starter for Rangers? Probably not. Will they get opportunity in pre-season to show that they've grown and be around the group more, um, more consistently? Yeah, certainly one or two and have an opportunity. And I think the best thing is that they come over to training readily like, and they come over a lot and they show their qualities. And then from that, they get a chance on the bench and play. I think this season, a number of young players have either been involved in the squad or been on the pitch, but no one at the moment's been able to make that jump to starting. Leon King, I still think, has got the, the youngest player with the most minutes in the Champions League. So he's had a season early in the season where he's had big exposure. Adam Devine in my first few games was excellent and he's had some injury problems as the season's gone on. And same with Alex Lowry. I think he's in a really good place. So 
in that sense, I'm quite pleased with the young ones I've got around us, but I would urge them to, their training sessions is more important than some of the seniors. Their training session for them is their match. They have to train above the level of the session physically and, and really showcase themselves every time they get an opportunity. Michael, if we go back to Malik Tillman, what kind of vibes were you getting from him in terms of him wanting to stay or not? Me and Malik are in a great place on a personal level. I think he's been brilliant for the club. I think he's been brilliant for me in my time here. He's a player that I think has got a really high ceiling, as high a ceiling as anyone that I've worked with in my time here at Rangers. There's areas of his game at 20 he certainly needs to brush up on and, and that's why he's come on loan. We said we would park the conversation to the middle of May because there's a lot around it and you want to get to the end of the season and Malik's got a say in this as well. Uh, obviously the two clubs uh, have been talking back and forth and there's agreements between them but the most important person is Malik and if Malik wants to be here in Glasgow then it's something that we can make happen and likewise if if he's unsure um, and that the conversation me and Malik are great we have a fantastic relationship but we said we'd park it to the middle of May and nothing's changed on that